perfect pie fit for Mary Poppins herself. And as she would say, that's a pie crust promise. Easily made, easily broken. And today we're gonna prove that you can make pie at home. You can make it as quick as you can say, Bob's your uncle. And the most beautiful things begin to happen. So if you love my videos, if the craziness that is my videos, hit subscribe down below and hit that bell icon to be notified for every time I post a video. So shall we begin? So we're gonna start off with two and a half cups of flour. And a good rule of thumb is that you want to scoop your flour into your dry measure and don't pack it in there. Don't do that. <laughs> Using the flat side of the spoon, I'm going to level out the spoon. One. And a half. Next, I'm going to add one spoon of sugar. And of course, it makes the medicine go down. Next, we're going to add a teaspoon of salt as well. And we're just going to whisk this all together. Make sure it's well combined. So I took a whole cup of butter and I grated it. And this will give you that fine grain that you need. With a pie dough, you want everything chilled, the flour, salt, butter, any grain that you're gonna be using in the pie. You want it to be chilled in the fridge for at least an hour. And I went ahead and I grated one cup of butter. It's easier to break up into the flour. So just add it in. So just continue to work it and you want it to be lentil size. This is honestly the most magical part of making this. It's like fun sand. This is kind of cold and crumbly and that's exactly what you're looking for. You want lentil size, not small pea size, not pea size. You want lentil size. So we are making a lattice shape and a little pear handle umbrella, of course, appropriately. Uh, a pear handle umbrella in the middle of our pie. So you're just going to continue to work that flour from the middle, swirling motions, and continue to work that until you get that texture. Now here comes the fun part. We're going to take some ice water. And if you don't have any room in your freezer, this is a cool little trick that you can do. You can freeze half a bottle of water Fill it up with water after it's been frozen for about four hours, and then fill the rest up with water, and then you've got your ice water ready for your pie dough. So for me, it's about seven teaspoons at a time. You know, the number's gonna vary, you know, flour varies, there's so many variables if you don't cool it down right. Um, there's so much to take into account, but generally it's about seven teaspoons for me. So I'm gonna start with one. That's all you need for now. I really like to just work from the sides and work it into where that wet flour is going to be. You want to hydrate it kind of slowly at this point. And you'll see it, see it start to clump together. Don't worry about it. This is perfectly normal. Okay. And once that's fully incorporated, add your second teaspoon and just work it in slowly. going from the sides and you see it start to like rehydrate already third teaspoon now that you've done that though we're almost there I think three more like I said <laughs> number five and we'll add in a second one just for good measure I think it's almost there Almost there. Last one. And I just worked from the sides, made sure it was hydrated, and mixed everything together. And you can see larger clumps are beginning to form. Now you want to do the squeeze test. If it's hydrated, it'll stay all together in one little bundle. And when you shake it, it doesn't crumble into sand. 
That's exactly what you're looking for. So we're gonna roll it out into our dough ball. So working with your hand, you're gonna press it down onto the batter and form it into a ball, just into the center of the bowl, just to start it off. So I'm using the side and pressing it into a disc-like shape. Scraping the sides, pressing down at the same time. Now it's going to be a bit finicky, but with even pressure, we wanted to get it into a workable state and then we'll use saran wrap to finish it off. Press it into that disc shape. Now you're gonna take your disc shape and just press it onto a saran wrap. Next, we're gonna use the sides of the saran wrap just to press it into that bowl shape. We're gonna take all corners of the saran wrap and press. I don't know what this process, but this always makes it seem like it's not gonna happen, and then it just happens. Stop trying to make fetch happen, okay? More and more tighter into a ball. All right, so now your disc is all together. I'm just gonna place another saran wrap on top and continue pressing. All right, so this rests for an hour. I'm just gonna swap it out for another dough that I have ready to go, and I'll show you how to do the lattice work. So I have my pie dough all ready to go. I have my chill flour here. And I'm gonna dust it just lightly over the top of my parchment paper. And I'm just gonna dust it lightly on both sides. Um, make sure to use a pastry brush if there's any excess flour. Next, we're gonna divide the pie dough in half and set aside half of it for the pie dough. Put a little bit of flour on your rolling pin. And I'm gonna press on the top just to work in the butter a little bit. Press down evenly just to work it. Give it a quarter turn, do the same thing, just a light little press on top. And now I'm gonna to begin to roll it out. Quarter turn, give it a roll, quarter turn. Another roll. Make sure to keep dusting it as you go. But I'm gonna use the rolling pin and just roll it into the pie dish. <laughs> so I'm gonna take the side, roll it up on the rolling pin. You don't want to stretch it, and just roll it onto your rolling pin. Next, we're gonna roll it into our pie dish and just roll it gently over top. So you can see there's some even, uneven edges. I'm just gonna cut a bit of the pie crust and stitch it on just like a TikTok. I'm just gonna press that in there very, very gently. You need to get some egg wash and really, really fix up your edge. Now that we have our crust laid out in the bottom, and yet again, using my knuckles and really work it into the corners and then patching it up with some spare dough, I'm gonna chill this in the fridge and we're gonna work on the lattice work. <laughs> so, using my pie plate as a guide, I'm gonna generally see what strips that I want. I need long ones, so I'm gonna go lengthwise like this. About one inch of sections. And I'm gonna keep going the length of the dough in those like one inch sections. Don't worry about if they're uneven though. I really should have got my ruler out. Huh. So we're gonna start assembling. Assemble. <laughs> so we're gonna start assembling. Before you add your filling, you're just going to dock the bottom with a fork, just so it doesn't puff up in the oven. And I did par bake my last pie uh, for about seven minutes, but I'm not gonna par bake it. You can par bake it, which means baking it beforehand. So I have some chilled cherry filling here. That just goes to the bottom there. 
I like to get every single morsel out, of course. I mean, oh, I like to take a knife and just lift up each lettuce piece, kind of loosen them up. So we're gonna start off with the center piece that goes right in there. And I like to like jab underneath it in case it sticks and releases pretty well. So we're gonna make our little cross. It looks so solemn and cross. Anyway. And we're gonna add one more. Another one on the other side. This is looking a little bit like the British flag and I'm not mad at it. <laughs> Obviously. We want to lift up these two sides here and then we're going to place it right in here. We're going to go opposite to the opposite side, so over that side. Next we're going to lift up this piece and then go right on top. Now we're going to lift up these two pieces on top and, and release just like that and you're going to repeat that for the rest of the pie. And you could save any remaining scraps for anything that you want to do artistically on top of the pie. But that's it. I'm going to fold over all the edges. Just like so. Oh. No, I'm not. First off, we're going to put some egg wash around the edges. So I put about two eggs and maybe uh, one third of a cup of water. And I chilled this overnight. And I'm just gonna go around the edge. And I'm just gonna fold it over just till it reaches the top. Just like this. Roll over all edges of dough. And you want it to be over the edge of the bowl because otherwise they will get a little bit dark, but that's kind of the characteristics of a pie. It's beautiful. I'm practically perfect, not absolutely perfect. <laughs> Next, I like to press down the edges with a fork. This part always reminds me of Snow White. Am I right? <laughs> Definitely not my favorite Disney princess. Here's my pie all egg washed and ready to go. This is literally the third pie I've ever made, you guys. It's not that hard. You just have to be patient. It is a little bit time consuming, but it, oh my gosh, look at this. So I have little kites and then I have a parrot handle umbrella and of course her carpet bag. I'm gonna chill this and set my oven to 400 degrees. After 30 minutes, I covered it up, the edge up with tin foil. It'll go for remaining 20 more minutes. I'm gonna give it an extra 20 minutes with this pie. I just feel like I know that's gonna look the best at this time. And you really wanna judge it on how it's forming, how it's caramelizing and everything, but this is what I chose to do. Still looking so gorgeous. So I'm not sure why, but the pie filling went over the edge a lot more than I would desire, but I'd say this is a success. There's the Mary Poppins umbrella, her magical carpet bag, and all of the kites going up above. So we are gonna let it rest for an entire day. Do not cover your pies, let it cool in a dry, cool place. Now it 
was time for the taste test. I thought I would go all Spider-Man. Um, honestly, I wasn't planning this look to look like a spider web, but I'm really, really digging. I'm really, really digging it right now, and I'm so excited to try my pie. Here is the slice right here. Oh, how do you like that? Oh my gosh. Okay, not the cleanest uh, slice right now. It has been sitting for a day. Um, just because Claire Soffit said it should be, but I'm going to try it and we're going to talk about all things I didn't show you in this video. Here we go, first bite. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, so tender, so light, buttery and flaky and crunchy. Oh my god. Mm. I'm gonna take one more because like, oh my gosh. Mm. 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 Am I the other person that dances when they have really, really good food? Like, yeah, very hard to wait on this pie to just cool for an entire day, but I suggest you do that. I do want to say with this pie dough, you have to add a lot more water if you're in North America, and specifically Canada in general, we're just drier. And one of my friends brought this up, that the humidity is lower. So you need to add a lot more water than you think when it came together. Um, I don't know if it was warmer and more humid when I made my pie last, but you generally want it to be like a little bit pliable before you put everything together. So I added about uh, two more teaspoons of water to it and really reinforced it and reset the pie dough. You can do this. It's It's been proven. I want to take another bite. <laughs> Um, so that's what I didn't show you in this video. I know it came together kind of magically. I just, part of me was like, I want to show you the success that I can do it, but obviously it wasn't enough. It was just, it was too dry rolling out the pie dough the first time. Um, I think you saw that for the bottom of the pie, it was way too dry. Thank God I had some scraps, you know, from the first pie that I had. So this is my second try and it's so classy and beautiful. Has little kites, Mary Poppins carpet bag, and Mary Poppins umbrella as well. But anyways, I'm so proud of it. And honestly, you can make it at home too. And that's not a pie crust promise. I love you all so much. Au revoir, my beautiful bubbles.